there, and welcome to the Jerry Anderson channel. I'm Ross Arrowsmith, and today we're bringing you even more archive interviews with fan favourites like Ed Bishop and Gabrielle Drake. Both famous for their work on UFO, Ed in particular was very attached to his role as Commander Straker. The concept of UFO was an alien infiltration of Earth to harvest human organs in order to survive, a concept which Ed thought could be greatly expanded. I think that the concept, when it was started off, was too narrow. We had these guys coming from somewhere to take out body parts, or and, and we lost that kind of... Uh, it was too narrow. You had to, if you listen to Star Trek, the, the beginning, the guy says the mission is to a 15-year mission to explore the universe and unknown worlds. Wow, you could write anything there, but to be, you know, our our formula was too telescope down the wrong way. It was too narrow that we had to keep chipping away to make it a wider uh, compass, you know, a wider vision. Uh, so why they came was body parts and missing people. I think that was a little that was a bit of a mistake. In the, in the end, quite by accident, I don't think by design, that we never really knew from what galaxy they came from, and it, it, that was a little bit shrouded mystery, and I think that mystery added uh, was, was an asset. But in the beginning, it, it was too narrow, and uh, then when they didn't explain who they were and whatever, it became an asset. Whilst the show featured many action-packed set pieces, special effects sequences and high-level episodes around the alien invasion, the show also tackled the human stories, particularly with Commander Straker's character. Perhaps one of the most discussed episodes of the series is a question of priorities. Hello, I'm inquiring about a patient, a young boy, John Straker. But well, there must be. John Rutland. Yes, he could be under that name. This slightly controversial episode really brings into focus just how far Straker's duty to Shadow has to go, what he has to sacrifice, and perhaps why he is the way he is, the cold and calculating commander we've come to know and love. Ed Bishop, on the other hand, may not agree. And I had reservations about that at the time and, and subsequently more because I felt that that was out of the, again, it was pressing on the series. When you stop, what do you think the point of departure was? Here they come to get body parts. And now we're concentrating on the personal tragedy of, of you know, somebody in, in the crew. It's quite a leap. And I think you invited the audience to take too great a leap than your own son's life. Listen, Mary, please, it, it's not like that. The people who are going to watch uh, for the soap opera elements of it, the real life interrelationships between whether this guy loves this girl who works in shadow, the, that's a whole other ball game. But you can't, it seems to me, to marry those two things together, you're, in, you're asking for trouble. Then expecting a guy to say, gee, it was, my, my kid has been injured, I've got a divorce, and now I've got to save the world from alien invasion. Mm. It just, just strained credulity a bit too much at that point. So those episodes are concerned that, although it was great as an actor, because that's what we do, we, you know, we, we don't want to look at monitors and say trajectory termination. Uh, we'd much rather say, I love you, or I don't love you. I, I want to be free. I mean, that's what acting's are all about. But uh, I think it might have been a mistake. Well, it would. I would say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. The fact that it is still popular, still being shown, what is it, 30 years after? Um, it seems to me that it can hardly have been a mistake. It would hardly have retained its popularity. In the face of many, many other science fiction series that have arrived since then. Everything that I hear from people, I mean, they are admittedly fans, so they're bound, I suppose they're bound to be in favour of it, but they seem to think that it's worn very well. And it certainly stayed the course when a lot of others have fallen by the wayside. You're forgetting one thing, Foster. Willpower. I think the, the overall, looking at them now, especially the ones that were shot at 35 mil and, at uh, MGM, I mean, the quality, 
definition, the integrity is is fantastic. It really is. I mean, the technical aspects of it, the scene, the costumes, the presentation. Uh, and I feel that uh, the software the, again, lets it let the team down, the actors, to be, to be specific. I think that, uh, and the stories too, the writing was uh, a little predictable. And watching it, even then, uh, the audience was there before the characters on the screen. And that's a, a death knell. It, because it, once the audience gets ahead of the characters, and the, the characters are still trying to figure it out, the audience has already done that. You might your history. You're in trouble. And I think that happened to a lot of the episodes, particularly the MGM ones. But when we got to Pinewood and shot the eight or nine episodes we did then, it was a different ball game. And we just didn't have enough to spike the whole series of 26 with that new thought. Thanks for watching. Let us know your favorite episode of UFO. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next week.